Hi, welcome to Whalo's Workshop. I'm Whalo, and as you know, if you've been on the website or on our YouTube channel, that you know the tagline for Whalo's Workshop is "This is Art." In order to create that art, uh, to better uh, paint what we do, whether it's a figure, uh, a miniature, or a model, I think it's to our advantage to understand color and color usage and color theory and how to mix color. Um, I've been studying color lately because I'm very interested in painting figures and busts and I've been learning not only how to mix acrylics but how to uh, mix oil paints as well. So as I've been studying this I thought well you know this I found this very uh, helpful so I thought I would share it with you guys. And what this is is this is a color wheel. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. As you can see the price here is $7.99. Um, with the 40% off coupon, of course, that makes it 480. And this is probably the handiest tool you could have um, as a, as a painter, whether you're working with a brush or you're working with an airbrush. Um, understanding color theory and understanding the basics of color theory is basically what this wheel does. And then from there, you can extrapolate other things, um, which we'll talk about. But first, let me pull this out of the package and we'll take a look. Okay, one of the reasons why I think this is a, a really great tool is because it shows us what happens when we mix colors. Um, when we take the primary colors, and primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, and we mix any two of those together, what happens is we get secondary colors. So basically, if you think of it in these terms, if I had a dropper bottle of each of the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue, and I mixed any two of them together, so let's say for instance I take one drop of yellow and I take one drop of blue, what I wind up getting is green. Okay. If I take yellow and red and I mix them together, I'm going to get orange. If I take blue and red and mix them together, I'm going to get violet. Now again, that's one-to-one -one ratios. And those are, are considered secondary colors. Now what's called a tertiary color, which is the other six colors that exist on this wheel are the colors you achieve when you take a primary color and mix it with a secondary color. So again, if I've mixed yellow with green, I get light green. If I mixed green with blue, I get blue green. If I take blue and violet, I get blue violet. If I take violet and red, I get red violet. If I take red and orange, I get red orange. If I take orange and yellow, I get yellow orange. Now, one of the advantages of thinking of it in terms of a dropper bottle, like we do for the hobby, is you can think of ratios then, right? So now, to achieve a yellow green, I would want to take one drop of yellow, two drops of blue, I'm sorry, two drops of yellow and one drop of blue to make yellow green. If I wanted to make blue green, I would take two drops of blue, one drop of yellow. Because you think of it in terms of this is a if this is a 50-50 mix, then this this would be two to one, right? Two blue to one yellow, or two yellow to one blue, two blues to one yellow. So again, there's your there's your mixing ratios and how it comes in factors in. So it also, this wheel teaches you, is what happens when we mix any two colors, any of the primary colors with any of the colors on the wheel. So for instance, if I add yellow to yellow green, this is the color I'm going to achieve in a one to one ratio. If I take yellow and add it to green, this is the color I'm getting. And going all around the wheel that way, you'll figure out what colors are what. So now you're taking 12 colors and you're turning it into, basically you can turn it into millions. In fact, colorists and people who study color theory, they put it at tens of millions of colors that can be mixed. Um, I've seen uh, in the computer, you, you have the ability to take gradations of colors when you're selecting colors to color something, um, like in paint. Um, and the color, the color options there are just endless. Um, the other nice thing this color wheel does is it shows you what happens when you mix black and white with that particular color, which is basically how we tend to lighten and shade things, um, you know, in its most basic ways. So if we take, for instance, we add white to yellow, this is the color we're getting. If we take and add black to yellow, this is the color we're getting. So 
that gives you that gives you a pretty much a full understanding of how these colors are going to use how they're going to mix in with each other um, the other nice thing that the, this wheel does is it shows you your warm and cold colors now your cool colors are colors that begin with yellow green and work their all the way around to violet as soon as red violet begins that jumps and becomes a warm color so here you're seeing basically the warm spectrum and the cold spectrum of colors now why is this important well when you study a color when you look at a color you're looking for its hue which is basically the primary color that it's used to be that's used to mix that color for instance if you think of rust the primary color in rust is probably orange if it's darker rust it's going to be red orange so as it as it falls closer to the red orange that primary color is red so we can say that rust would be a warm color right but it also tells us what we can add to it to lighten and darken it which is another nice thing about this let's say for instance you're mixing up rust for your tank and you you come up with your own version of a rust shade you like a dark rust shade and you want to lighten that color and darken that color without using black and white because what happens with black and white it tends to change the color or um, it turns it you know if you're adding white it tends to turn it into a pastel color it's actually that's the difference between what's called tint and shade shade is blackening a color tinting is adding white to a color and toning a color is actually adding gray to it which we'll talk about in a second but again if you're using our example of rust if I'm looking to create a, a rust range of color I can do that by simply looking at this edge of the wheel and saying okay well I want to start with a, a red orange and work a little bit lighter in this direction by adding a little bit more orange so I know that what I'm going to be doing is playing with the blends of yellow and red from those primary colors I'm going to achieve that orange color if I want to lighten that lightest part without adding white I can add a little bit of yellow if I want to darken that orange I can add a little bit of red and darken it down without actually having to um, add black or add white to the color and actually changing um, I guess you would say the tone and the shade of the color what you're actually doing is, is you're keeping the vibrancy of the original color you've created and you're simply moving it to a lighter or darker um, hue of that color the other thing the color wheel does here is it gives us the gray scale um, starting with white working its way all the way around to black it's showing us in ratios that full gray scale and what's nice about this is on the back it's going to show you exactly the tone tint and shade so tone um, would be that gray scale so these are the colors again on the wheel um, the way we started this is what happens to yellow if I take yellow and a 50 50 mix of gray so 50 50 would be uh, one drop of white right with one drop of black we mix those two together we come up with a gray we then add one drop of yellow to one drop of gray this is the color I'm getting if I'm adding white to this color this is the color I'm getting if I'm adding black to the color this is the color I'm getting and that's what this whole scale does this the, the back of this whole thing is nothing more than tint tone and shade now taking a closer look at the center of this wheel what you're gonna see here is um, some shapes the first thing you're going to notice is you got a straight line going across here and what that means is colors that are on the opposite side of the wheels or the opposite side of the wheel is considered complementary which means these colors work harmoniously together and are pleasing to the eye so um, you know if you don't know what a good color scheme is for say or you think of like interior decorators things like this what they do is they take and they use these colors and they put them together um, using complementary colors or colors that are on the opposite sides of the color wheel at the same time you could take for instance yellow look at its complement which is violet and then use the split of those to ones to the opposite side so you got blue violet red violet are considered a split complementary 
Then there are color triads, which is basically, if you look at it this way, this is yellow, red, and blue. Now those are circus colors, those are kids' colors. If you're going to do a child's room, those bright outside colors, the, the, the brightest uh, of that color range, are, are considered uh, not only good together, but uh, you know healthy, vibrant, uh, childlike colors. Um, aside from a split complementary and a triad, then there's what's called tetrads. Now there is a rectangular tetrad and a square tetrad, and you can see both of those inside the center of this wheel. That's taking any four colors and putting them together that, that, that as they cross their paths in, the, in the, either one of these two tetrads. So, um, for example, what you can see here is you got orange and green and blue and red. So those four colors, again, if you think of a child's room, those four all work together, and that does make sense, right? So um, that's basically what this color wheel is going to teach you. Is it's going to show you how colors work together. It's going to teach you uh, tint and tone and shade. It's going to teach you the warm and cool colors. It's going to teach you um, your primary, your secondary, and your tertiary colors. It's going to teach you um, what happens when you mix colors together, what colors you can achieve. It's going to show you what happens if you add black and white. It's going to show you what happens if you add from the grayscale. So, you know, I found it to be very handy. Um, I, I like working with it. Uh, for instance, on the Batman project, uh, his utility belt, I had a real bright yellow, and I wanted to bring that color down. And what I did was, um, rather than, you know, if you look on the color wheel here, yellow, the opposite of yellow on the color wheel would be a violet. So what I did was, I didn't have violet, but I had a little bit of a darker blue. So I took a darker blue color, because it's within that, coming close to that violet range, I added it to that yellow, and it, it, it took the the brightness of the color down, but I didn't lose the yellow. And I, you know, that's one of the advantages of having it. Another one is, is if you think in terms of triads, I know that's real popular, especially with the... Uh, miniature painters is uh, using colors that work together as triads so for instance if you're if you're thinking in terms of your uh, your dark your mid-tone and your light color if you look at the outside of the wheel this will give you colors that will work together within ranges where you're not going to have something that's uh, you know ugly or unpleasing to the eye or doesn't work balanced together um, so that's uh that's what the color wheel can bring um and help you with um the other thing that i thought you know might be interesting to talk about would be um actually mixing the colors um learning how to mix colors learning how to blend your own colors um it, it makes it more fun to do um these projects that we do um, we sit and we run around and we buy, you know, not, I, like with Batman. Initially, I wanted to paint Batman black. Um, so I went out and found every shade and tone of black I could possibly get my hands on. With blue, with gray, um, you know, German ticker. I got every possible color of black or, or a shade of black or gray or gray black or blue black that I could possibly get. And the funny thing was I had the colors to achieve that here all along. I didn't need to run around like a maniac and spend twenty, thirty dollars and dropper bottles of paint. And in the end I didn't even wind up using them, which was, you know, really hilarious. But um truth be told, that's what I did. Um I'm embarrassed for having done it. And now I look at it and I think, you know, I think I'd like to take more of a hand at learning how to do this. Mixing these colors and achieving my own colors, um, I think, is a lot more fun. It'll make my project different from everybody else's. Um, possibly, I hope to, uh, you know, achieve better gradations in color. You know, like you think of the uh, 35 millimeter war figures, where you're trying to come up with the, you know, the lighter folds of his uniform versus the darker um, areas within the folds of a uniform or a, a worn leather look. Um, by knowing how the colors blend together, uh, by knowing what happens when I add gray, black, or white to a color, by knowing uh, uh, what color uh, is the primary color or the hue of the color um, that I'm trying to achieve, I can better figure out how to mix and blend those colors together. 
so anyway um i found it real helpful um like with figure painting which and bust painting which i'm looking to get into uh i know a lot of modelers especially european modelers tend to uh work both with uh oil paint as well as the acrylic paint to achieve a lot of the effects oil paint you get better uh flesh tones skin tones from it uh you know you get better uh results a lot of times with clothing and articles of clothing and uh color types um also creating a sense of fabric in it so being able to uh mix those colors and blend those colors uh that i'm looking to use and building my own palette say from four or five basic colors um that's that's actually awesome uh, one of the things I'm learning to do is use called something called a limited palette which is basically you're taking a, like a burnt umber uh, red yellow and blue and white and you don't even use black you you create your own black um, by mixing blue and brown and if you ever look at black a lot of times there's no real black in nature um, so if you look at a color of black uh, on a car let's say for instance You'll see some black looks more blue and some black looks more brown. Um, and we call it black, but it's not really black. It's either one of the other, one of those two uh, hues is the base element of that color or is the base hue of that color. So, you know, hopefully I'm not boring you to death with this, but I, I found it very interesting. I found it very handy. Um, and again, being able to mix colors from colors, I, I think makes us better at what we do, better at our hobby. Um, so uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Uh, please uh, like, share, comment, and uh, you know, stop over and see us on the website and uh, say hi to us on Facebook. All right, thanks for watching. Okay, bye.